Hi, my name is Wulan Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with acclaimed singer, songwriter, and author, Matt Howells. For more on Matt, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at the incredible talent of Matt. <laughs> Great, thank you, and I'm so excited that the audience has got a little sneak peek of your original tune, And I Love You. Matt, you were born in South London. When did you make your way over to the States? I was, I was born in South London. I came here um, at the tail end of 2007, more, more really towards 2008, getting into 2008. So it's been, yeah, a good 13, 14 years ago. I love it. I love it. Well, you are now in Brooklyn. I'm in Manhattan. So excuse any sort of noise. But as you know, living in any borough in New York, you are bound to get a lot of sound yeah. from yeah. outdoors. It's just but part of it. Yeah. <laughs> it's part of the gig. It's now, part listen, of the gig, man. Yeah. Yeah. You are not only an amazing singer songwriter, but also an author. And I want to get into all of it. But first and foremost, I really want to traverse when you came to the States, the band that you were part of, the Glorious Fames, and then, the, mm -hmm. then how did that traverse into you taking a break to write a book and then doing the Matt Howells project and then into Kill Devils? Sure. So, so um, yeah. <laughs> um, so I, yeah, as I mentioned, I, I moved to tail end of 2007, sort of beginning of 2008. And we actually, the Glorious Fames, we got together pretty early on in that, I would say sort of January, February 2008. So pretty much as soon as I got here, I, I just put a, an ad on Craigslist, as you kind of do. And um, Craigslist is a, it can be obviously kind of a crapshoot, but we were lucky enough that myself and my singer Paul and um, the drummer uh, Wiggy, the three core members of that group, we all met on Craigslist and just kind of took it from there. Like started jamming, got a couple more members and started putting together our own material and playing around. And we did that for... I want to say a good eight solid years of that, um, during which we, we did a couple of cross country tours to the West Coast and back and played LA and sort of down south, south by southwest. And uh, off the back of all that, did two albums, um, three if you want to count like a third chunk of songs we recorded. So it was, we were kind of like, a, you know, we had we were our side hustles, our sort of side jobs in order to pay rent and everything, but we were quite a busy band. We were still playing three or four shows a month in New York City, plus those tours. and recording everything and I, I guess sort of after yeah a good seven eight years it's not that we started drifting apart it's just some things just don't last and various things happen in life listen when it, it, it just sort of you know and not to interrupt you but you know I get it in a way that you know maybe a lot of people couldn't relate to you know as mm -hmm. even though I'm a professional director for 25 years yeah. I performed with my twin brother Anthony and it wasn't like the band was breaking up, but that we uh -huh. wanted to pursue our individual blisses. Yeah. Me as a director, my brother as a singer, songwriter, in Nashville. Oh, but used to say, you know, if we get yeah. back together, but continue, my friend, because after Glorious Fanes, you know, decided to take a pause. Was uh -huh. it after that time that you wrote your book? It is. And uh, one of the, not to get too personal or anything like that, I'm perfectly happy talking about it myself, but um, around that time, I was also dealing with um, some personal issues around the time I, I became sober. I'd stopped drinking alcohol, which had become like a bigger and bigger and bigger part of my life and this thing that I had to deal with, of course. So 
that was also for me personally a reason that I was taking a step back from the glorious veins. The book Carnivores of People Two was born out of that. It was sort of after I'd checked myself in, got myself cleaned up, and and sort of made a headway into sobriety. I found that picking up the guitar and playing was not alien, but the fact that I'd been for so many years playing guitar and singing and having alcohol as part of that whole thing. You know, you go before a show, you have a few drinks, have a few drinks after the show, et cetera, et cetera. So I, I spent a good six months to a year trying to extricate music from that lifestyle so that I could rebuild music in my life, not connected to any of that sort of behavior. And I needed some outlet while I was doing that, while I was trying to figure things out. And writing poetry just sort of spoke to me a little bit. I, I dabbled in it in the past with not any great success. And I, to this day, I wouldn't call myself a poet, but it was the only way during that small amount of time that I could express myself um, purely because I don't think I was ready to really return to music straight away, if that makes any sense. Well, Matt, that makes a lot of sense. And actually, I'm going to disagree with you. I think you're a beautiful poet. I think you oh, can hear you. it in your songwriting. <laughs> and what a beautiful thing that you did to realize that you wanted to reapproach your music when you were mm -hmm. in a different mindset. And I'm sure yeah. too, although that must have been hard for you, there must have also been a little part of you, and correct me if I'm wrong, and then obviously after that in creating the Matt Howells project, that you almost had a newfound childlike wonder about playing. You're because absolutely right. You yeah. got to do it with abandon and just you, yeah. with no yeah. crux. It's, it's, you're absolutely right. It's once you sort of get through, it's a mind game because in your head, or in my head, I was like, oh man, I've been playing for so long and, and it was all kind of this rock and roll lifestyle. What if I lose that edge? And everyone, well, not everyone, but a lot of people who go through a similar process, I think have a similar thought pattern is like, I'm going to lose that thing that gave me a spark. But of course that's all nonsense because when you get around to it, it's, you know, you actually, I, I think I'm a much better player and writer now than I ever have been, you know. Well, um, the flow so is a lot clearer, you know, it's a yeah. lot, it's yeah. from your mind, your heart, yeah. your soul. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so then how did that traverse into you creating the Matt Howells project? Oh, well that, so during the Glorious Veins, I would occasionally do sort of side project gigs, um, blues mostly because that's sort of where my first love musically as a guitarist is, is in you know, old school blues music. So I'd, I had this sort of side project. At the time I would call it the Matt Howells Blues Project and every four or five months we'd go and play a show in the village or something. That was like a little side thing. Um, and then, yeah, like after I published that book and the Glorious Veins were sort of no more, so to speak, although we're, you know, kept in contact. Um, I sort of got that, that blue side project together and decided it would become a bit more of a, a main project for me. I love that. And in you attacking your love of the blues, you are now also, talk to me a little bit about Kill Devils. Yeah, so Kill Devils is a really exciting project that, funny enough, is um, there's five of us. The singer is from the Glorious Veins. So we have a little connection there, the singer and I from our past. I love that full circle. Yeah, yeah. So we've been, uh, well, there's three of us, kind of four of us actually in the band that writes the material. So we've been kind of, it's very much a collaborative process. Um, we've been recording for a couple of years now, really since just before COVID hit. We were in the re recording studio just rehearsing and recording and we're just putting things on Spotify and really trying to get a, a first show going for that group. So it's uh, exciting things on the horizon. Yeah. Well, I love it. And, you know, I want to also buoy that comment into what I'm sure you're also very much looking forward to as things start to open up, that live performance aspect. What do you miss most about it? Very lucky to have already um, gotten back in a little bit into that. Um, the Matt House Project, we played a couple of shows in on the Lower East Side, venues like Rockwood Music Hall and the Red Lion are sort of opening up for, for music. Blues Jams are coming back to the village, which is really cool. So. And honestly, there's, I mean, live music has always been a big part of, of the scene here, but there's, people are like really coming out to see live music and like are really into it. And I'm, I'm sure that's true of a lot of our other art forms that are managing to sort of get back up and running now. But it's it's really nice to see, you know, live performance is a two-way street. You're playing on stage, but you need that audience inter interaction. You know, it's, there's some shows you play to no one, but that's like a different story. But you, it's it's a really cool thing to have an intimate show with people who are really digging it in the moment in the same way that you are. And to see that happening again and coming back post-COVID well, is a beautiful thing. It's well, look at Matt, when I hear about you talking about, and thank you, by the way, for sharing what you did, about you you, you, you re-looking at your music and your playing when you got sober, but also the fact that after this trauma of these last 17 months, 
to now reapproach live performance, I'm sure with a newfound gratitude because yeah. of the missing of connection we've all had during yeah. this time. Matt, I am so excited to see you live one day because I am in Manhattan and I have no excuses because I could take a subway downtown and see you at one yeah. of these venues. Love to see but, it. but for our audience, for more on that and his incredible talent and to see where you can see him live, please look below this video. And Matt, I am so grateful to have met you and I cannot wait to meet you in person soon. Likewise, thank you so much for your time. I'd love to meet you soon, yeah. Thank you. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all. Join Phoenix, join the change.